Namaste and welcome to our continuing series Questions and Answers from the Works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today we continue with our series on flowers, part 17. From the Mother Disciple Mother, may I ask something? Mother, ask. Disciple, Mother, last time I didn't understand something. What you said about the time you used to count the transformations flowers. The figure showed the number of people who would be transformed. After a silence, Mother, that, well, that depended on the previous arrangement I had made. You see, one day it could be one thing, one day it could be another. Sometimes it was only movements, elements, cells. Sometimes it was people. It depended on what I saw as possible and the arrangement I had made before counting. It was as when I used to give people a certain number of flowers. At times it meant as many movements in you, as many elements of your being can be changed. At other times I used to give them a certain number of flowers. Well, you will have the power to change, to bring transformation to as many people as there are flowers and all kinds of things like that. It was not always the same thing, but it was always a power of transforming something. It could be the transformations of the will. It could be the transformations of action. It could be the material transformations of the cells. It could be a transformation of yourself the transformation of stars in the universe, of many things. It depended on people. Disciple, when it was for people, was it a total transformation, sweet mother? Mother, sometimes. Usually there were also associations with other flowers. There were times when one could organize one thing more than another. There were times when I arranged flowers in this way. But for some people, it was a total transformation. But when the time factor sometimes eludes us, it is difficult. In organizations of this kind, the most difficult thing to control is the time. One does not know if it will be in a year or in a hundred years. It is difficult to control. I never had the opportunity to give the time sense to flowers, and probably it is not possible. Perhaps it will come, but for the moment it is an element difficult to gauge. And what are the things that man should cherish and defend? All those that give him life and make him better, stronger and more joyful. So let him watch over every child that comes into the world, for its life is precious. Let him protect the friendly trees and grow plants and flowers for his food and his delight. Let him build dwellings that are strong, clean, and spacious. Let him preserve with care the holy temples, statues, pictures, vases, embroidery, as well as beautiful songs and poems, and all that increases his happiness with his beauty. But above all, children of India and other lands, let men cherish the heart that loves, the mind that thinks honest thoughts, and the hand that accomplishes 
loyal deeds. The ashram is becoming a more and more interesting institution. We have now acquired our 21st house. The number of paid workers of the ashram, laborers and servants, has reached 60 or 65. And the number of ashram members, Sri Aurobindo's disciples living in Pondicherry, varies between 85 and 100. Five cars, 12 bicycles, four sewing machines, a dozen typewriters, many garages, an automobile repair workshop, an electrical service, a building service, sewing departments, European and Indian tailors, embroideresses, etc., a library and reading room containing several thousand volumes, a photographic service, general stores containing a wide variety of goods, nearly all imported from France, large gardens for flowers, vegetables, and fruits, a dairy, a bakery, etc., etc., you can see that it is no small affair, and I am taking care of all of this. I can truly say that I am busy.